At this point in time, even though it's early in the 24 draft process, we already know that the one position that is loaded from top to bottom, it's stacked from left to right, it's the wide receiver group. You got about 15, 20 players that are going to be drafted early and be contributors for an NFL team, help your team win games. But you know in the game that we play, fantasy football, we're just not looking for contributors. We're looking for players that can absolutely go get it, be a dog for us, score points from day one. And I believe there are three wide receivers in this class who fit that bill, who fit the mold of a wide receiver that's going to get drafted and from day one get the opportunity to earn targets to be their team's number one wide receiver. Washington Huskies wide receiver Romo Dunze is one of those three for me. I'm excited to dive into his profile. Let's get it. Okay, let's get it. Welcome back to the station. Welcome back to the channel. Y'all know who it is. It's your boy, Ray G. You can find me on X at Ray GQ. And yes, we are taking a look at Washington wide receiver, Rome Odunze, who, in my opinion, is not the wide receiver one, two, or three. He's the wide receiver one C in this class. I think there are three elite level wide receiver prospects in this class. He fits the bill along with Malik Neighbors from LSU. Check out that video right there. And Ohio State's wide receiver, Marvin Harrison Jr. But before we know where a player is going, we got to talk about where he came from, where he's been. And I'm excited because he hails from my home state, Nevada, playing at my rival high school in Las Vegas, Bishop Gorman. We had some nasty battles with Bishop Gorman. You can take a look right there. There's a video. I don't know how the camera quality was so good in damn 2003, but my team versus former All-Pro running back from the Dallas Cowboys, DeMarco Murray. Big fight after the game. We beat him in the playoffs. Just check that out if you just want something else to do. But Bishop Gorman is a powerhouse in Las Vegas. Produced quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, and all-world freshman from the University of Southern California, Zachariah Brandt. So you're talking about a school with a very, very good pedigree of putting out high-quality athletes in college. And Odunze was no different. Coming out, you're talking about a young man who had over 120 receptions in high school, almost 2,500 receiving yards, over 30 receiving touchdowns in high school, which is kind of unheard of. This young man was a professional wide receiver early in his playing time, and it wasn't just what he did on the football field. He did everything, man. This dude played basketball, 10.6 time in the 100-meter dash, so he can scoot, he can boogie, he can move, but despite being Nevada Gatorade Player of the Year in 2019, despite the fact that he put up those numbers, the respect wasn't as universal as you might think. His composite score, when you take a look at all these services, is wide receiver 44 in the country. And according to 24-7 Sports, he was wide receiver 22 overall. And one of his teammates, who's also in the 2024 NFL Draft class, Jalen McMillan, was rated much higher than Romo Dunze. So coming in, he was already, same way we talked about Malik Neighbors, he was not even the highest rated wide receiver inside his own draft class. But that did not matter because he got opportunity early and he capitalized. And also, fun fact, he and Puka Nakua were on the same damn team in 2021 before transferring out to BYU. So what could have been had Puka stayed for one season with Michael Penix, Romo Dunze, Jalen McMillan? Neither here nor there. This young man, his accolades in college speak for themselves. At six foot three, 215 pounds, he fits the build in the mold of what we traditionally like to see. Let's take a look at what he's done in college throughout his career. Rome posted back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. In 2022, 75 receptions, 1,145 yards, and seven touchdowns. In this past season, where he earned every freaking accolade you can think of, I'm talking about AP First Team All-American, All-Pac-12 First Team. He was the Bolitnikoff Award finalist, mid-season All-American, AP, FAFWAA, PFF, CBS Sports, The Athletic, he was a monster after posting a 1,640-yard season with 13 touchdowns on 92 receptions, averaging 17.8 yards of reception and almost 110 receiving yards per game. So when you're just talking about his ability to go out there and command it year over year, he proved that two years in a row at a Power 5 conference level. So when you, when you just zoom out and just look at his ability 
with a Jalen McMillan, with a fantastic running back in Dylan Johnson, and another talented wide receiver, Jalen Polk. There was no doubt about it. Rome was the guy. All right, we're going to head over to DestinationDevy.com and check out some of our tools on the website. You can access that below, DestinationDevy.com. This is our NCAA prospect comparison tool where you can look at some important metrics for some of these wide receivers versus other players, historic or currently in this class. So let's pull up the radar chart and take a look at Odunze himself. When you look at his yards per route run, Damn, damn near 100th percentile, air yard share, very high, target share high. Yards after the catch per reception, we'll talk about that in a little bit. EPA per target pretty high, and his PFF receiving grade, he was a top 10 wide receiver in the 24 class, according to PFF. But let's take a look at him compared to some other players in the class and some other players that has played historically. You've got Malik Neighbors versus Romo Dunes, and it's a little difficult to see here, but Malik Neighbors is the lighter shade of purple. Romo Dunes is the dark one, and for the most part, very similar. Yards per route run, looks like Malik Neighbors has him by a hair. Air yard share looks pretty identical. EPA per target identical. The receiving grade is close. We know Neighbors is one of the best receivers in the country, according to PFF. Yards after the catch per reception, a little better on the Malik Neighbors front. That's one of his calling cards, his superpowers. And then the target share, a little higher for Malik Neighbors. Now let's take a look at Romo Dunze versus Chris Olave, somebody that I've talked about on Twitter at one point in time, compared him to a larger version of Chris Olave. I got a new one for y'all that I'll drop at the end of this video. But you see this, everything better than what Chris Olave did in his final season at The Ohio State. Also, Romo Dunze versus Marvin Harrison Jr. Now, Marv, the consensus wide receiver one in this class, better in just about every category. He's a little better than Rome. That's why he is the 1A in this class, but it's not like he's just dominating and killing him in every single category outside of the yards after the catch per reception, which we shall talk about. Again, I want to look at Rome versus another big body wide receiver. Seen a lot of comparisons to T. Higgins. His final season at Clemson, it's a little different, right? Target share wasn't quite there for T. Higgins, but a little better after the catch. EPA per target was higher. Yard per route run was higher, but the air yard share and the target share much better from Romo Dunze opposed to T. Higgins. And then finally, let's stick inside the Pac-12 and talk about Odunze versus former first round pick, top 10 pick, Drake London. Better in every category except for PFF receiving grade. So when you're just looking at Romo Dunze versus his competition and versus other players that sort of profile similar to Romo Dunze, he's right there with some of the top dogs. All of the numbers, all of the accolades, all of those things are fine and dandy, but damn it, I want to see the film. How does he play on the field? Well, let's pull that up right now and take a look at some of the tape. All right, Romo Dunze, bottom of the screen. This is versus Oregon. Little screenplay right here, and you can see, even though the run after the catch wasn't the highest, it's not as high as some of the other players, he can move with the ball in his hands after he does it. He's an aggressive, aggressive runner of the football after he gets it. He's a physical player, and he uses his size and body positioning to his advantage right here, one-on-one -on -one situation. Great coverage right there. I think that's Kyrie Jackson. But when you've got somebody as big as Odunze at six foot three, 200 plus pounds, his ability to put his body in position to shield off defenders is second to none in this class. When you get him isolated in one-on-one -on -one situations, the back shoulder fade, this is something that he's going to be proficient in from day one in the NFL. And this is what you've got to be able to do when the quarterback is giving you that opportunity. It's condensed windows down there, sticky coverage. You got to make the play. And one of the things that you notice are the hands are strong right here. Get the cornerback bailout, boom, sink your hips, stop on a comeback route, go get the ball. Nice little play that'll never show up on the highlight reel, but it's good to see him be able to do things other than just scream down the field and make contested catches. He is a complete wide receiver. And then 50-50 balls with his catch radius, with his size, this is child's play. This is easy. Just throw it up, let him go do it. You know the saying, F it, somebody's down there. Yeah, F it, Romo Dunze's down there. One-on-one -on -one situations, I will put my money on Odunze, and he's physical here in the running game, trying to help spring the running back. You see him pushing the cornerback completely out of the way. These are little things that I want to see out of my starting wide receiver, out of my ex. When you're not getting the ball, get physical, get down and dirty. Odunze does that. And then again, when you have him in these situations, such an impressive adjustment to the football, and then boom, the strong hands get your feet down, 
Odunze is incredible at that. And then more stuff, more body control, more awareness. He's just always under control. Look at that. To reverse pivot, he's looking inside. He's got a reverse pivot on the outside, locate the ball, strong hands, making a play for his quarterback. Incredible, incredible situational awareness. And again, in one-on-one -on -one situations, I'm taking my chances. Put it up, F it, Rome is down there somewhere. Outstanding at tracking the football, positioning his body. This young man, I just say it, I've said it over and over again, he is a professional wide receiver right damn now. Now we've watched some tape, you see the skill set, the body control, the fluidity, the smoothness, the strong hands, his aggressiveness, his ability to run all the routes in the route tree, his suddenness off the line of scrimmage and ability to win in one-on-one -on -one situations. We talked about the data, the statistics, his PFF grade, what he's done throughout his collegiate and, and preparatory career. We know all of those things, but who does he play like? now? I tweeted out a couple of months ago, he reminds me of a bigger version of New Orleans Saints wide receiver Chris Olave, and I still think that is the comparison, but I'd like to add a little sprinkle. Can I add a little something to that comparison? I believe he's a combination of Chris Olave and former Cleveland Browns wide receiver Josh Gordon. Those are the two players, if I could smash those two guys together, get the fluidity and the smoothness of Chris Olave, but also that explosive playmaking ability that Josh Gordon used to possess, I think that right there is the perfect combo and combination to equate and compare Romo Dunze's game to. And if you were a fan of Josh Gordon or if you're a fan of Chris Olave, you should love Rome Odunze. Now, where does that fit? Hell, anywhere. Arizona Cardinals could fit. Doubt he's going to land there, but just in case, Mar goes three to the New England Patriots and the Arizona Cardinals are sitting there at four. Could be Malik, but it also could be Romo Dunze. At five, Jim Harbaugh got a chance to see Quentin Johnson in the playoffs last year. Don't know if he wants to roll with him as his wide receiver one or two. So the Los Angeles Chargers with Justin Herbert and newly, had, newly hired head coach Jim Harbaugh could be a landing spot for him. Hell, the Atlanta Falcons next to Drake London. The Chicago Bears, another weapon for their new quarterback potentially in Caleb Williams. And the New York Jets with Aaron Rodgers coming back and their need to win and win now. Pair him alongside Garrett Wilson because he ain't got nobody else. That, too, could also be a really good fit for Romo Dunze. As far as rookie draft purposes are concerned, he's a top four pick in all single quarterback formats. I don't give a damn. There should be no running back talked about. There should be no receiver outside of potentially Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr. that you're taking ahead of Romo Dunze. And in super flex drafts, I think his floor is 106. So if you've got a top six pick in super flex, be excited. You're probably going to get you some Odunze. And if you got you a top three pick in single quarterback drafts, be excited because you've either got you an Odunze or you have a Malik Neighbors. Either way, this young man has been incredible from high school to college. And I think the next stop for that level of success is the NFL. So I appreciate you tapping in to this prospect profile, trying to get y'all in in about 15 minutes or less. So if you stuck around to the end of the video and you found it entertaining, actionable, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, like, and subscribe. And until next time, y'all be easy, baby. I'm out. Peace.